It's still a good morning. So I'm going to say it again. Good morning. Good morning. We have come to the end, the last Sunday in 2014. So, as we do every year, I'm going to let you guys talk. I'm going to share a little bit about what God has done, um, what I see God has done in this church. Um, a year ago, I talked about 2014. Uh, 2013, I asked that everybody would commit to fasting one day a week. And then in 2014, we kind of went the opposite direction. We talked about hospitality. How many people... No, I'm not even going to ask. I'm not even going to ask. Here's my point. Don't give up fasting. Don't give up hospitality. Just because 2012 is gone, 2013 is gone, 2014 is going, don't give those things up. These are things God has called us to. I would challenge you, look in Scripture and see what the last days will look like. And then look around you. Turn on the news. Any news. See what's going on in the world. And then hold that up in light of what God says is going to happen in the last days. Absolutely amazing how accurate His Word is. Absolutely amazing. And in this time, we cannot slack off. We cannot rest. We cannot be complacent. We cannot slumber. Time is short. We have to live every day as though this were the day he were coming back. This day. Right now. And I look at the parables that Jesus tells about the faithful servants. When the master had gone away, they took care of the master's business. The parable of the talents. What are you doing with what God has entrusted into your care? <laughs> well, what's God entrusted me with? Everything. When he comes back, will he find you working about his business? Or we, will he find the poor steward who's wasting his master's talents, who's abusing the master's servants, who's not accomplishing the master's purposes? <coughs> 2014 was tough. Matter of fact, it's still tough. For Christy and I personally, it was one of the most difficult years we've gone through for a very different reason than all the other difficult years we've gone through. We've had some stinkers. But it's also been one of the greatest years. Because for every difficulty that God has brought us through, He has brought us through. Do, do you understand that? Do you understand that? God allows affliction persecution, difficulties, trials in our lives. Why? Now, there's, there's, there's two purposes very clearly stated in Scripture. First, He wants us to grow up. He wants us to be mature. He wants us to get out of diapers and get into big boy pants. Worker pants. <clears throat> He wants our faith to be mature and complete and not lacking anything. But the other side of that is how we get there is because he wants us to absolutely, completely, and totally trust him. To learn and to know that we can trust him. And I'll tell you, this has been a tough year for me learning to trust God, because there are a lot of times I have felt completely uh-oh. And 
And it's hard. When you feel completely alone and you look at his word and you see the promises of the word, and that's what you're standing on. But you don't feel it and you don't see it. But as he brings me through those things, he is faithful to show me how he has brought me through. It's no, no ability or talent of mine. Boy, he's been quick to point that out. Glenn, you've got nothing. Thank you, God, for that. <coughs> because, man, if I had to minister to you guys with what I've got, you'd be a wreck. I've got some scriptures that I want to share with you. Uh, turn with me, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 30. Actually, no, we're going to wait on that one. Turn to uh, Psalm 118. Let's start there. I'm reversing my order. That's my privilege. Because you guys don't know where I'm going anyway. Psalm 118. Verses 23 and 24. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now I'm going to flip over. I'm going to read another passage. You're going to see in a minute where I'm going here. In Isaiah chapter 43. You don't have to turn there if you don't want. I'm, I'm going to kind of go a little quicker here. Uh, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. Verse 18 says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I believe that verse right there speaks to 2015 for this church, this body. I personally, I think that verse speaks to the entire Christian body on this planet. God is doing a new thing. A new thing. He is making a way in the wilderness. Why? Look around. We're living in a wilderness. Look around you. We're in the desert. We live a life of privilege in the United States of America. Man, we are so blessed with junk. You get that? We're so blessed with junk. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about things. Things just are. Okay? Whether you have them or whether you don't is kind of irrelevant. I'm talking about junk. I'm talking about those things that clutter up our lives and distract us and dissuade us from a passionate pursuit of the things of God. How many of you have more than one television in your house? How many of you have more than two? More than three? I don't even know how many televisions we have in our house. I, I, honestly, I don't know. I would have to probably go room to room and figure it out. Now, you don't have to raise your hand. I'm not looking for, uh, I'm not trying to embarrass anyone. But I want you to think. How many of us spend more time watching those televisions than we spend in the Word? 
How many of us spend more time watching those televisions than we do in prayer? Or worship? Or living out the things that God has called us to as his people? I read the scripture more today than I ever have in my life, ever. I'm in prayer more today than I have ever been in my life, ever. I spend more quiet time before the Lord than I ever have in my life. I'm in worship more now than I have ever been in my life. And I am firmly convinced of one thing. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough for me, and it's not enough for you. <clears throat> now, I'm not talking about your prayer life. I'm talking about my prayer life. My prayer life is not enough for you, because this is the flock God has entrusted to my care. And every day, Christy and I pray together, and one of our prayers every day is God prepares for ministry, planned and unplanned, seen and unseen. Because, boy, he has a way of springing them on us. Boy, if, if you were to look at my schedule and see the people that I talk with on a week, that would only show you the planned ones. We were talking about this the other day with our children, about how we pray for planned and unplanned, seen and unseen. And we were on our way to Pizza Hut. We were taking them for lunch. And guess what happened at Pizza Hut? Unplanned. And I have got to be fully armored and fully prepared for the work that God has entrusted me to. And I can't do that. Frittering away my time. I can't do that if I'm unprepared. I can't do that if I am a spiritual couch potato. God is doing a new thing. He is calling the church to battle. And this battle is a battle that is fought on our knees. Pouring out before God the needs of this world. Number one, salvation. Every person in here knows people that are not saved. A lot of us have very close family members that are not saved. How much time are we spending on our knees before God on their behalf? Every one of us here knows people or is going through tough times. Going through some people, some of you guys are going through hard, difficult things. You've been so generous to share what you're going through with Christy and I. And sometimes I'm amazed. Wow, some of you guys are tough. God trusts you a lot because he's put a lot on you. How often are we on our knees for those in tough times? How awesome is our God? How convinced of you, how convinced are you of how awesome he is? Are you absolutely convinced? Because if you were, you couldn't help but worship. You couldn't help but want to just sing his praise and proclaim his praise. Because those times when I finally get my thinking right and I get my ugly self out of the way and I can see him, that's when I worship. Because he's awesome. 
I mean, think about just who He is. God is love. Not this cheap garbage that we see on television that lasts for three and a half years and then seeks something else. Not this garbage that is predicated on you meeting my needs and keeping me happy. But absolutely, totally dependent on Him, not me. And then that love He gives us to share with each other. So that when you do something that offends me, I don't have to be offended. Do you understand that? You can choose to not be offended. I'm not very good at it. Ask Christy. Let me think. Should I be offended or not? I don't even get that far. I get, should I be offended? Yep. <laughs> Are you convinced how awesome he is? I'll tell you, if you want to really understand and see how awesome he is, it starts here. It starts here. Okay? But, but a lot of times, when you come at this with this, you're in trouble. Because then your understanding is based on your ability to understand. And, and some of us, we're, we're not very understanding people. But you want this to come alive to you? Get back on your knees. Build relationship with God. Make that your primary endeavor. Building that relationship. Investing in that relationship. He will meet you. He will meet you and he will surpass every expectation that you have. Why? Because he's infinite. Your little brain cannot think of all the great things he is. We, we can't even conceive it. God is calling us to be warriors, to be mighty men and women of God, to be his body placed on this earth to stand united against the forces of evil that are raging and warring for the lives of the lost. And we come up with some lame, Sorry excuses for not fighting the fight. Don't we? Oh, they don't want to hear that from me. They just, uh, just, I'll just show them. I'll just show them. I'll, I'll live out my testimony by how I live my life. Good start. Poor finish. I'll tell you what, I'll take any one of you guys on in the 50-yard dash for the first three steps. <laughs> Except for Cameron, I tripped him first. <laughs> Good start, poor finish. <coughs> How will they hear? Unless what? Somebody tells them. Who's the somebody? Well, Pastor, that's your job. Great, bring them in. You guys bring them in. I'll preach the word. Deal? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. How many of you, don't put your hands up, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but how many of you honestly would not consider inviting someone to church? And why? If you are embarrassed to invite people to this body, this fellowship, find one that you're not. Okay? We are ambassadors of the ministry of reconciliation that we have received. Do you understand what that means? God has commissioned us 
to carry what we have received to others. The life-giving message of the cross. Not just in eternity, but for this life. A full measure. Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. Did you guys watch A Christmas Story this year? Pink Bunny Soup? Did you guys watch that this year? Because uh, we watched it this year, and there's, I am convinced that the church in America is like Randy. <laughs> Man, he come flying down the stairs. Oh, my! Oh, my! And that's the way we are with the gifts of God. Oh, mine! I don't want to share that. That's mine! Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme! Press down, shake it together. I'm good with overflowing. That's mine! God is calling us to something new. This church, Jesus Community Church, this body, this family. He is calling us to more than we have yet achieved. And when we get to that point, guess what? There will be more. And more. And more. Jesus told the parable, he says, which of you as a servant would work out in the field? And then come in and expect your master to feed you dinner. Wouldn't you rather come in and prepare the master's dinner and serve him? And when he has been served, he will say, go and eat. But how many of us are like that first sermon? Whew, boy, hard day at work today. I read three and a half verses and the daily bread. Time for rest. God bless me. This is God's face. <laughs> bless you, my child. Yes, I long to bless you. I long to bless you more than you could ever comprehend. But that's not the way. God is calling us to get out of ourselves. He's calling us to go out into the world. We are to be lights in dark places. We are to be strength for each other. We are to be a support to each other. We are one body, knitted and woven together. That's how this body functions. That's the way God designed it to function. That's God's plan and purpose. That we be knitted in together, that we might function properly. So when I'm hurt, when I'm down, you come along, you pick me up. And when you're hurt and you're down, I come along and pick you up. We are his hands and his feet. We are his heart. We are his mouth. I'm his bald spot. We are his bald spot. But we all have a purpose. One more scripture I want to share with you and then we'll move forward. <clears throat> I wasn't going to read this verse, but I'm actually going to back up and read it. Um, I'm in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, I'll let you go ahead and turn there. Isaiah 30, verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, 
Yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore, but your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ears shall hear a word behind, behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, then you will defile your carved idols overlaid with silver and your gold-plated metal images. You will scatter them as unclean things. You will say to them, be gone. You realize we have that teacher, right? And it's not me. It's God's spirit that lives and each and every person that has come to him. That seal that marks them as his. The counselor, the comforter, the teacher. That guides us in all truth. We have that. But catch what it started off with. Did you see what I started with? Though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Even if God lets things get tough, and he's going to let them get tough, why? Go back to the first part of the message. Because he wants you to grow up. He wants you to be complete. He wants you to trust him and see he is trustworthy. But even when this happens, the teacher will be right there with you. Instructing you, guiding you, leading you, teaching you. That's another reason we come together. We teach each other. We teach each other. Boy, you guys would be absolutely amazed. If there was some way... I could somehow show you all of the things that you guys teach me. I think it would humble you to realize what great teachers you are. Because, see, I listen. Even when you guys tell me things I don't want to hear. By the way, Vivian and Dave, we still need to talk after church. <coughs> I listen. I don't necessarily like it, but I listen. And then God prompts me and he pokes me and he keeps nudging me. And he keeps nudging me. And the speed limit went from 65 to 55. This last week it was 45. I, I, I don't get it. But I'm willing to wait until he teaches me. Slow down. And I only passed one of them, Vivian, just one. <laughs> So be prepared. I am convinced that God longs to do a new thing. I believe we are going to see a new thing being birthed in this church. I think we're already seeing it. I'm convinced we're already seeing the beginning of it. Okay? I don't know what it's going to look like. I pray almost every day. God, give us a vision of what you want this church to be. Us. All of us. Not just me. I want you guys to get it. I want you guys to be passionate about it. I want you guys to be fervent in your pursuit of what God wants to do with this body. What he wants to do with you. See, if I, I try and convey it to you, you're not going to have the zeal that you have if God gives it to you. So I want him to give it to you. Bypass me completely. I'm, I am okay with God does not need me. Thank God he wants me. He doesn't need me. So be prepared. I am convinced God is calling us to up our prayer lives. I, I am convinced that, I'll tell you what, I am so blessed every Wednesday when we come to prayer meeting. Because we have a faithful core of people that is out here every Wednesday interceding for the needs of this church. But I am convinced it should be as large as this group right here. Now, I'm not, 
I understand some of you have other things. Some of you have Bible studies you do. Some of you are involved over in youth group. There's other things. But, but quite honestly, if you're sitting at home watching your favorite TV program, I'm targeting you with my prayers. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but God does. And he's going to get you. They're going to cancel that show. <laughs> or move it to another night. <laughs> Two thousand fourteen, Christy and I made an agreement. Actually, I just said, "Can we do it this way?" And she said, "That was okay." So that's an agreement. <laughs> uh, I get to talk about what we have seen <coughs> in Jesus Community Church over this last year, and these are in no particular order. Uh, some of these she put down, and some of them that I came up with. Um, number one, we have a ministry that I don't think anybody here ever realized we really have. We are giving out Bibles like you would not believe. As near as I can figure, just going back, because we were looking around for Bibles, and we realized we needed to order more Bibles. And so we ordered 25 more Bibles, and I'm, I'm thinking, well, well, we just ordered 25. How long ago did we order 25? Last summer, we just ordered 25 more Bibles. And we need more Bibles. We're giving them away. We're putting them in the hands of people. We have a ministry getting God's Word out to people. I, I've given away five or six right here in church where somebody's come up and said, can, can I have this Bible? <laughs> Take it. Poor Angie. She comes in and looking at, there's another Bible. Go get another Bible. Because she keeps us stocked. Matthew, every time we take a load of wood somewhere, he gives them a Bible and a track. We're not just heating their houses. That's another ministry. The firewood pantry. Wow, that thing's exploded. We have people that are in dire need of warmth. Inside and out. And I'll tell you what, if bringing them a load of firewood can get us warmth on the inside, can get the word of God in their hands, get them the, the message of the gospel, and somebody saying, hey, look, we're doing this because Jesus loves us and loves you. Let's go cut some more wood. Let's load it up, haul some more wood. That's another ministry that God has just blessed this church with. And, and not just that ministry, but he's blessed us with men and women that go out and get the wood and bring it back to Matthews and chop it up and split it and load it and haul it and take it Wow! Incredible. Have you guys noticed that there seem to be less and less seats on Sundays? I, I don't know why God is growing this body. I am thankful that He is. Although, honestly, sometimes it, it distresses me. Because when we were smaller, I had a whole lot easier time getting to know everybody. And sometimes I go home from church on Sunday absolutely frustrated because there are people I didn't get to talk to and I wanted to talk to. But God is growing this church not for naught. There's a reason for it. And quite honestly, I'm not as into the numbers as I am to the growth here. And we're seeing that. We're seeing people step up that have never stepped up before. We're seeing people open up that never opened up before. God is doing things in this body. Sometimes I don't know what he's doing. He doesn't need me to know. But it's amazing to see some of the changes in some of you. It's thrilling to see some of the changes. Youth group. The entire dynamic of the youth group has changed. The entire dynamic. We had, how, how many people went to Belize, Kevin? I don't want to say. I think there was 11 of us. So. 
11. 11 people from the youth group and the youth leaders went to Belize and got to minister down with the Kidders. You listen to what goes on in the youth group. And some of the things that I hear those kids say, kids, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't say that, the younger adults, <laughs> and, and I use that only in chronological age because some of them, God is already using more mightily than some of us. God is doing something dynamic with that generation. Because I look at some of their lives and I think, wow, man, I didn't get to there until I was probably in my 30s. And look where they are already. We get to hear more from more people. Dennis, Matthew, Steve, Josh, all have gotten up, got to share the word over the last year, year and a half. What a blessing that is to me to know that if I'm ever in a place where I can't preach, well, we got four or five people that I can call and say, hey, could you take the service on this Sunday? And I can trust completely that it's taken care of. Don't even have to give it a second thought. We celebrated three weddings this year. And one engagement. Skip and Vivian. Ben and Kate, Terry and Alan, and for those of you that don't know, um, Josh DeBoer proposed to Mackenzie on Christmas Eve. We have video of it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Not because of them, but because of certain people in the room that were oblivious. <laughs> and it wasn't me, it wasn't Christy, it wasn't Mackenzie, it wasn't Josh. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> but come talk to me about the video because it's pretty stinking funny. <laughs> this is one that blesses me. How much talent we have in this church. Wow, talent. I mean, incredible talent. That song, that special, Sino wrote that. An incredible gift that God has blessed her with, that he has given her an outlet to share with us. And of course, you know, Angie just steps in and just completes it because Angie does that. <laughs> hey Angie, we're thinking about doing this. And all of a sudden it's great. <laughs> and Steve and Angie, I'm, I'm going to kind of segue here for just a moment because we were talking about this earlier. You guys really have no understanding how blessed we are to have them as our worship leaders. Because every week, not only they, they put the, the song service together, but they are incredible. They're gifted at bringing up young worship team members. They're patient, they're kind, they're encouraging. I look at our children that have come up into the worship team, and I remember Benjamin playing the violin <laughs> painfully sometimes. <laughs> and Steve and Angie were so encouraging. And Donovan and Mackenzie, now three of my five children have been brought up under their ministry to be on the worship team. One of them having gone out and serving in another church on the worship team. We look at the talent here, and I believe that the talent that is here is not just here because God has called it, but because Steve and Angie are encouraging it to grow. They're doing what is necessary for it to flourish. Amen. But boy, for those of you that missed the Christmas Eve service, or um, the, the Christmas program last Sunday, wow, did we have talent. Yes. 
We had two songs written by people that came up and performed them just, just that night. We, we have got incredible, incredible talent. And not just, not just music talent. Look, at if you noticed how good the buildings are looking lately? That's because of you guys. Because we have people in here that know how the saws work and how to fit things together so it looks nice. And that would not be me. I know mostly stay out of the way and bring them lunch. That I can do. We have Sunday school teachers who put programs together and things together for our children to understand what this is about. <clears throat> we have a prayer chain that if there is a need in this church and by the way this thing is completely underused but if there is a need in this church within minutes there are people praying there are people lifting it up to God we have people in this church who intercede regularly daily I don't mean just whip out a prayer. Oh yeah, and bless those people too. But are on their knees praying for the lifeblood of this church. And we have a family here a family in this fellowship. I'm not talking about one particular family. I'm talking about this fellowship as a family that you don't see in most churches. There is a knitting together here that God has done that is incredible. And, and as good as it is, I want to encourage you, grow it. Boy, when visitors come in, Welcome. Suck them in. <laughs> Let them know that they are loved. That we love them. That we are pleased that they are here. That we find joy in them being here. That we can fellowship and worship together. Let's grow that. 